Hello and welcome back to the series of Disaster Recovery. In this video, I'm going to talk about the uh, documentation part uh, for a disaster recovery, what documentations are required and which are the things you should document. Uh, I will be talking about the uh, uh, high-level diagram and low-level diagram. I'll just give you the uh, explanation, how, what is the high-level and low-level diagram and I will be also talking about how to keep your documentation updated. So let's get started. Uh, whenever you plan for a disaster recovery, you need to make sure you have server configuration documented correctly. But go back to our board and I'll document the things which you require. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, this is, for example, our oversimplified diagram, which is your production. So here we have a servers, we have a network, and we have applications. You need to make sure you document all the information which are required for your servers, network, and application. So what you can do, you uh, you you can document the all this information with the help of Excel document. Most most of the people they do that. A uh, few people call it a run book. Some people call it config. Some people call it something. I won't. Uh, it's it's all up to you. How how what what do you want it to do, or what do you want to name that? But you need to make sure your production servers information is mentioned there for, with the server name their IP, uh, their configuration, and uh, uh, is there any specific setting ha is required on this on the server. Uh, you need to make sure you, you update your network information with the network config. And it, this is not a config file which you back up. So network config you need to document on the, on your, from, from your firewall to your, your some file. I would recommend to create the diagrams which will be high and low level diagram. So we'll, we'll come to the high and low level diagram later. I'll, I'll explain that. However, you need to make sure your network information is documented. Like what is the IP address for your servers? What will be the public IP address for your application to use? Also, we need to make sure, you need to make sure that uh, server configuration and, uh, and the application configuration is also uh, documented. For example, you have an application called web app and in that web app, you have so many servers, like uh, you have a uh, um, database server, you have a app server, you have a web server. All these servers information, you need to document, you need to make sure that you have documented them correctly. Uh, then uh, when you have all this documentation updated, then only you will be at the time of DR, Let's assume you, you have a uh, uh, virtual machines or virtual environment or you are using SRM. Still you want you to make sure that everything is documented. When you do the DR testing at your DR site, there is no time for you to go back to your production servers and check what is the IP address for XYZ server when it's not coming back. You need to have this documentation ready here so that you can open that config and you can make sure that, okay, this is the IP address for the server and uh, we need to assign this IP address. Uh, also, whenever you do this uh, planning for prod and DR, uh, few people decide or tend to keep the separate IP address scheme for prod, uh, let's say 192. series at prod. And, uh, and at the time of DR test, they tend to use 10 series just to isolate the DR environment when they do the DR testing. Why? Because there is a side-to-side -side VPN, just assume there is a side-to-side -side VPN and it's just a test. You are just doing a DR test, not actual disaster. And uh, you wanted to have your production site ready, uh, also, like serving your customers and you just wanted to make sure your DR plan is working and uh, you also wanted to have this replication if, if there any replication is going on, whether it's a backup or a storage or whatever it is, 
they need to make sure that replication is not impacted. So they do the recovery on different IP address so that their production inf infrastructure will be intact. And they can use the bubble network. So uh, since the virtualization came into the picture, we, we uh, tend to use a term called a bubble network. In that bubble network, whatever we'll do in that bubble network will be there. It will not travel to, to your production or it will not revert to your production. And it will not impact any of But uh, the best practice, best practice says that you need to make sure you always use the same IP address because it's easy to understand, troubleshoot, and implement. At the time of test or, or uh, execution, you just break the connection between fraud and DR. You do the testing. You can also call that as a bubble, bubble network, but using the same IP scheme, and you do the recovery, and then you are done with the, once you are done with the test, you do the cleanup, and then you initiate the your application back, and everything will be at the same page. However, uh, I was talking about the configuration. So, so what you can use, you can have a small database server, you can set up an application or some kind of small uh, web application where you can update that. Or there are many tools available which do the discovery for your production uh, and uh, you document that. Some, uh, so for VMware, there is a very good tool called RV tool. And uh, what it does, it just run the script on the vCenter and it's capture all the information of your virtual environment and dump into the CSV file, which you can ex use for a DR test. But you need to make sure all the information is correct because it takes that information from the database of the vCenter. And those who have used that, they might have understand that some information which are inside of the virtual machine are not available. So you will not be having the application mapping, other things which are which are required to update that into that documentation manually. So there, there will be a manual effort, whether you use the automated discovery or manual discovery. I would recommend to use the Excel file because in that Excel file, you can create a separate separate segments for the server, network, applications. You can, you can subdivide those servers between Windows, then Linux, and then uh, database, and, and so, so and so forth. So it will be easy for you to, to identify and, and uh, segregate the information for particular servers or group of the servers. Uh, so that was for the configuration or the what config you should you should document. Uh, coming back to the diagrams, high level diagrams, low level diagram. If you if you have uh, seen the another video of the disaster recovery, I, I explained the similar scenario here, the prod and DR and the connectivity. So <coughs> you you will find those high level diagrams everywhere, but. Low-level diagrams are, are with much more details. They have this uh, IP address, what tunneling IP address you are using, what is the IP address for prod, what is the IP address for DR IP, sorry, IP for DR, what, uh, what is the speed of tunnel, what device, what firewall it's using for configure tunnel, how many VLANs are there, how many network switches are there, rack-level diagrams or, or um, whatever rack layout diagrams you, you can document. You can have documents there for prod. You can also document the always on servers if you have any at the DR site. Or you can update that or mention that in the diagram. I have a couple of templates for a low level diagram which I will be uploading on my website. I'll, I'll paste that into the, uh, the download link into the description so you can make use of that. Okay, so a difference between high level and low level diagrams. Uh, very, very simple. Uh, the high level diagrams are actually high level, means it is having a broad level information or, or thick information between broad and DR or whatever you have. Low, low level diagrams contains detailed information about your setup or network. For example, what is the switch number or what is the switch name, which port, ETH0 or what port of router and the firewall are communicated or connected with each other, what link you are using for to connect between storage and the SAN switch and uh, what kind of protocol you are using for SAN between SAN and ESXi. Those kind of information you update into the low level diagrams. Uh, I have a couple of diagrams for a template and as I said, I will be uploading that. So you will take a use of that. And if you just go, go ahead and do some research on Google, you will find so many network diagrams that you can take a reference of. So uh, that was the topic for today. Uh, so what we covered, we have covered the configuration uh, of your production systems, servers and network, uh, the diagrams, 
which diagrams you should keep always updated, uh, high level diagram and low level diagram. And uh, last but not the least, you need to make sure all these informations are timely updated. Means, for example, when you do the DR setup first time, if you have somewhere 200 virtual machines and 20 physical servers and uh, some 50 database servers and a couple of hundred network switches or something, whatever, 10 network switches and, and, and five routers and all those information, right? By the time you, you day by day, you do your, your operations task, this number get changed. And whenever this number get changed, you need to make sure you update that into your configuration. If your configuration is not updated, then your DR planning is incorrect because you need to make sure whatever changes you do at production, make sure that applies to DR side so that your DR recoverability is not getting affected on, and you're always protected to make sure that whenever there is a physical, there is a DR, you, you will be, you'll be ready to, or, or you have the enough information to do the recovery. I hope this information is informative for you. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I would recommend to share, like, and subscribe my video and subscribe my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.